With a traditional combustion engine, you need more air to make more power. The amount of power a combustion engine produces depends on how much fuel it can burn and how good it is at turning that heat into mechanical force. Now, with a naturally aspirated engine, the only way for an engine to get more air is through the suction created on the downstroke of each piston, but it can only suck so much air. That's where forced induction comes in. You are forcing more air into the intake. The more air you have, the more fuel you can burn and the more power your car can make. So, how do you force more air into an engine? Well, most people use turbochargers or superchargers to suck up more air. But like I said in the title, today we are focusing on turbos and more specifically a compound turbo setup. Before I can explain how a compound turbo setup works, I first have to get you up to speed on how a normal turbo functions. Okay, so turbos are genius. You are using air that would normally be wasted to create more power. With a turbo, you use the exhaust gases your car makes to spin a turbine. That turbine then spins a compressor wheel that then sucks air in and forces it in through the intake. That's the basic idea. So as the RPMs climb, your car will produce more exhaust gas and the turbo will spin faster. The faster the turbo spins, the more air it can suck and push into the manifold. But there are some negatives with using a turbocharger. Depending on the size of your turbo, you might have lag. Now if you have a very small turbo, you won't have a lot of lag, but the amount of absolute power you will be able to make out of said turbo won't be crazy high. Now increasing the turbo size means you can move more air, but it also means you need more air to spin it, so it has way more lag and it's less responsive. So how do we fix this? How do we improve our absolute power whilst having minimal lag? Well, we add more than one turbo and we make them smaller. Now there are three ways of doing this. Twin turbos, sequential turbo setups and compound turbo setups. So let me quickly explain twin and sequential setups before we go into the genius that is a compound turbo setup. Okay, so with a twin turbo setup, you have two smallish turbos that are exactly the same. Each turbo runs off one bank of the engine. So if you have a V8, each turbo will run off four cylinders. If you have a straight six, you'll have one turbo on three cylinders. Now negatives with the twin turbo setup is if they are super responsive, they will run out of steam at the top end of the rev range. And if they are nice and strong all the way to the end, they might still be a bit laggy. Now onto sequential setups. With a sequential setup, you'll have one small turbo and one larger one. So you'll theoretically have power straight through the rev range. Now how it works is you still have one turbo per bank. So let's say you have a V8, you will have a small turbo on four cylinders and then a bigger one on the other four. Now this means that with the small one, you'll have instant power even low in the rev range. And then the larger one will take over as you climb through the revs. Now the two options I mentioned previously are the most common, but the last one is the coolest by a long shot. Compound turbo setups. Now firstly, compound setups almost always look awesome with way too much piping going everywhere. In fact, compound setups don't really work in a small everyday car because there's just not enough space in the engine bay. That's why you don't really see small four cylinders with compound setups. And before you type and say Evan Shanks has one, yes, I didn't say there is none. I said they are very scarce. Anyways, onto how it works. In a compound turbo setup, the turbochargers are different sizes and operate in series meaning that the first turbo feeds the second turbo boosted air and the effect is compounded. But let's break it down even more. So you have a large turbo running straight from the manifold, making its own boost. But instead of having a downpipe from said turbo, you use that air to spin a second smaller turbo. Now the second turbo will force air in through the compressor side of the large turbo, compounding the boost. Compound turbo systems are most common in OEM diesel applications to provide vehicle owners with, res with better response, power and fuel economy. This is accomplished by a small turbo providing low RPM response with a larger one producing power at high RPM and simultaneously the two turbos operate as one throughout the RPM range. In other words, you'll have all the pros of having a large turbo with the response of a much smaller turbo. Only negative is you might have to run your car without a hood. Now if you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. I hope this video was informative and that you actually now know how a compound turbo works. I don't know how many people really gives a damn, but for me personally, this is really cool. I just think it looks awesome, it works awesome, and for me, I, I've got a big turbo car that's very laggy. And something like this just sounds awesome, because then I'd have all the power of the big turbo, but I'll have the response of like a twin turbo setup. So it just sounds great.
Anyways, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. I'll check you guys in the next one. Cheers, I.